where we are at this particular point in time is nothing more than at a stage whereby what we're seeking to do is to properly inform any debate that needs to be had. So what this is, is a paper that's purely gone to the Regeneration Committee of the Council. They may say no. And the recommendation at this point in time by the executive is that um, they should fund the feasibility study. Now, over the course of COVID, um, the move of a stadium to the, the, the Bits and Dock area has been um, elaborated into the move to something that they would the, the, the council see, which is a, a potential for a sports city world based there. So actually, the whole project is, is, has gone a little bit further than just the football club. But this is about really informing any debate that needs to be had. You know, and importantly, and, and this is said, so it, it's to better inform me and Nikki as regards our views, because my views at the moment, my view at the moment is that you know this is probably the the route to a self-sustainable championship club. The answer is there's further work that needs to be done on that, and it needs to be done by professionals, and that's what a feasibility study is planning to do. So when we come to the point, you know, the first step, the first hurdle to get over is is this feasible? Is this doable? Does it make the difference that we want? So um, that's what this is about at this stage. And people clearly have opinions, and that's fine. And actually, that's what we want, because apathy would kill us and would kill any club. So people's opinions are there, and, and they're out there on social media and so forth and so forth. But at this stage, you know, um, this is nothing better than just trying to get a feasibility study. Because if we don't have a feasibility study, uh, if the feasibility study says it doesn't work for us, we don't pass go, then we don't do it. And therefore, you know, in the meantime, we still have a club to run. Uh, we have we have a squad to put together at the season uh, to look after. Um, but if we get the feasibility study through and it says yes, there's still a way to go because we've got to then move it into putting a stadium design together, which we can then cost. And then you've got to look at how you get the cost, how you get the, what we call the capital stack pulled together. I mean, I have views on it now, but, you know, until I get that, I can't sort of make any sort of um, any moves down that route. So there's a long way to go. And in the state of design, that's the point at which you then start to say, well, actually, OK, um, fans, if you if we, if we were to have a new stadium, what's the type of thing designed? People talked about, we don't want a sterile stadium. That's the last thing I want. I mean, I played on that pitch. Um, I actually, and that's where the fans come in. Yeah, is, is there going to be um, safe, seat, safe seating, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But once we get to that point, um, that's when you really sort of have sensible debate. And, and that's what we're, we're seeking to do. Specifically on potentially going to a new stadium, what do you say to the view that says we've already got a, a home, an existing home, it, it, it's fit for purpose, why don't we invest in redeveloping that as opposed to looking to move elsewhere? Yeah, um, when you say it's fit for purpose, you, you've got to define what purpose is. And if you're saying that it's something that can produce, um, can it produce revenues day in and day out 24-7, the answer is it can't. Can you say is it efficient uh, in terms of, for example, energy usage? You can't, and so forth and so on. So we have, the, the point is, is that, you know, can it be redeveloped? And the answer to that is that we've already had a look at how you do that and, and, and how that, and that's what I'm saying. Prima facie, I think that it can't be developed uh, it, as a better option than a new stadium. That's what the feasibility study then moves on, it looks at what the new stadium would look like. Then I've got something to benchmark what it would cost to redevelop the state, uh, Panton Park. And that's one of the things we discussed with the fans and the trust. You know, they were saying well, they'd like to see the option of redeveloping Panton Park. So, you know, as part and parcel of us moving forwards, we at least have something to judge against what a redevelopment of Panton Park would cost. And in the very early days when I first came to the club, um, one of my uh, close friends who was involved for 10 years or so in terms of the redevelopment of the Benford Stadium and the relocation of the Benford Stadium, and he uh, worked with me on looking at the club and what we could do. We looked at the various options. And of course, um, so of course, but the view was that uh, it was difficult to redevelop in any sensible way. Now, 
that's why I come back to, well, I have a, I have a prima facie view. This is about informing my opinion. This is about informing the opinion of the fans. Because once I'm better informed, we can better inform the fans and make the case then. The case isn't made at this point in time, and the next step is to evaluate a new stadium. Mark, in terms of time scale, and this could be a how long's a piece of string sort of question, but this feasibility study say it does give it a positive. I mean, have you got any inkling as to, to when Tramir might be playing in, in a new football stadium? I, we, are, we are talking years here because, as I say, we have to have the feasibility study. Is it a go or a no-go? If it's a go, then you're into a period, as I say, of consultation, uh, simultaneously with design, simultaneously with, with them getting costings of this, simultaneously uh, setting up how you're going to pay for that, etc. So the whole thing is, is complex and will take a number of years for that to happen. Um, and then you've got the construction itself. If you said to me, would we be playing in this in five years? Uh, feasibly, yes, but you know, I wouldn't like again to put any time um, limits on that because people hold you to that. Whereas at this point in time, we simply don't know. What we know is there are certain steps to take whereby we realise the ambition of the club as safely as possible uh, without undue risk, etc. So the time, the, the time element, it, it's not going to happen next year. We're not going to press the button on a deal next year. It's going to be constructed over the next few years. And just specifically on that feasibility study, Mark, and, and look, we talk here even before it's been approved, but if it does get the green light, just the study, how long do you expect that to take? Initially, we thought that maybe this could be done by the end of the year. Um, it may be pushing into 2023. 20, 20, the years go by so quickly. Uh, 2023. Um, if that's the case, then, you know, I keep saying this, I, I want this to be right I want it to be dealt with professionally and therefore we won't be rushing to any and tied to any time scale. But I would imagine you'd be starting to look at certainly by the end of the first quarter of next year, being able to say um, this is a go or a no go. We've spoken about the restrictions that Prenton Park is putting on the football club at the moment. In your view, if the green light comes from the feasibility study and uh, and if further along the line, Tranmere are able to move to a new football stadium, what are your hopes, Mark? What's your desire, I suppose, for what that can do for, for Tranmere Rovers? I think all, all, all the way along, James, yeah, and this is, this is fundamentally about ambition. It's about the safe satisfaction of ambition. You know, because you, you can't tell me that there's a Tranmere fan who doesn't actually want... Uh, a, a, a championship club at least and I, when I say a championship club look people can say to me do you think Tramway can ever have a, 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 a Premier League club but the reality is that if you get to be in a self-sustainable championship club then I say you're probably six games away from becoming a premiership club you, know, you might have a run of good form you might have a, a lucky season whereby you get some really exceptional players and you're six games off the playoffs and um, going through the playoffs and getting into the Premier League so for me the target you know, realistically for me is to see this club at some stage and I don't mean me to do it because you know I'm, I'm nearly 70 but um, um, but it's to give it the opportunity to to get to a point where it is a platform um, to potentially you know, well, being in the championship and potentially becoming a, a, a premiership club as a consequence. Now, as I said, this is about realistically um, looking at the potential of the club and how it can be realised without undue risk. And as I say, it's better informing me because my view is that without this move, I don't think it can happen at this stage. And that's why I need to be sure that this is the type of move that is feasible and that can work. Because if it can't work, it won't be done. Um, but it is about ambition. And, and importantly, um, if I look at uh, the club, I keep on saying the club is really, to me, one of the sort of the um, the anchor institutions of the world. You know, I went to the, um, the end of the season, Doom, and I was saying it's going to be miserable because we haven't even made the playoffs, etc., but then I was, as I was watching the video showing the absolute delight on the fans' faces when the goal went in and all the clips of the season, you realised again something that you sort of know, you learn and relearn, that there isn't an institution on the world that actually creates that kind of euphoria through, that euphoria through so many people on so many occasions throughout the year. 
And, and that's why it's an anchor institution. The, the council recognise that it's an anchor institution. And I, I've said to the council, and I think I'll say it many times to other people, um, the world should have the ambition to house a championship club. Stand back and look at it. Look at how many people are on the world. Look at how much of a hotbed of football it is. Look how much you can do for the community. So you should have that ambition uh, to, to have a championship club on the world. And importantly, you know, if you then look at what's happened since we first discussed this with the council, um, it's Wirral's ambition too, because this is um, this is also about it's been seen as a catalyst for the regeneration of the South Bank, the, the bank of the river and the world. Now, I may be wrong on this, but I don't think there's any um, river that goes through a city that isn't developed on both sides of the river. Now, I know. There's the Wirral Conurbation on one side, and then there's the city on, of Liverpool on the other. But the south bank of the, of, of the river is undeveloped, and it's one of the largest potential regeneration projects in Europe. And this is seen as a catalyst, and you need something big to really get regeneration going, uh, to my mind, and to, you know, to the people who've actually discussed, we've discussed it. So it's a real step change as part of this regeneration effort on the south bank. Um, so I, I think that that's an important thing to take out. And, and look, you know, James, I recognise the passion, the history, the nostalgia for, for Prenton Park, and I understand that. And perhaps more than most, because I played, you know, so many games. And most of my career was spent on that pitch, and I certainly don't want a sterile stadium. I mean, I've seen that elsewhere, but that's part of the consultation. So I, I understand and recognise the passion. But for me, I. I think it would be remiss of me and for Nicky, whilst we're here, not to discuss, not to examine how this club and how the world examines the potential to have a championship club right in its heart.